Holy cow. Zach Life beat depression. It's day 850, and we're back coming at you live from Easton Training Center out here in Denver, Colorado. Had a couple technical difficulties, so I apologize for the couple minutes late, but we're here, and that's what matters. As you know, it is a martial arts for mental health show, and we like to focus in on those mental health tools first. First and foremost, very powerful tool of gratitude going out to Easton Training Academy for lending their space, for helping us raise awareness, for training me, for providing a clean facility with quality coaches and plenty of good equipment out here to train on. So if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, in Colorado in general, they have over nine locations that you can visit. I highly encourage you to check them out if you're interested in kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or just getting in shape. It's a great facility for all different skill levels. They have classes from beginners all the way up, intermediate and advanced. And they actually have a goal-oriented system for the Muay Thai, which is uncommon uh, out here. As you know, we don't use belts in Muay Thai, but they do have a shirt color-based system where you can progress through those shirts and you gain more and more privileges within the gym. Eventually you can become a trainer, intermediate trainer, advanced trainer, and you can work your way up that ladder system. The final shirt, a black shirt takes about 10 years of dedication and hard work and progress to attain. So very cool system out here. Also, as you can see behind me, tons of bags, tons of open mat space, um, tons of pads for pad work. And to my right, a jujitsu cage, a grappling cage, and way back there, a full raised uh, ring just like you would see in the UFC. So I want to shout out gratitude today. My gratitude is going out to the awesome crew out here at Easton Training Center uh, for all of their support. And go ahead and think about your gratitude for today. One or two things. Could be more than one or two things. You can keep going. Keep that list going. The more you use that gratitude tool, the more powerful it can become in your life, helping you focus on those positive things even when you're going through hard times or challenges. So please do tap into that powerful mental health tool of gratitude. Think about what you're grateful for today. That'll help put you in a positive mindset as we move into the lesson. Second mental health tool we're going to talk about is that progress tracking tool. It is day 850 of consecutive progress and success. For me, the Sackman, let me know how many days it has been for you. Remember, the more you keep track of that number, the more proof you have that you have overcome the debilitating effects of depression or anxiety. So please do keep track of your progress. It's another one of the, those tools that the more you use it, the more powerful it can become in your life. And even if you're not consecutively and consistently hitting your goal every single day, even if you're taking days off or you have sick days or things like that, this number never goes down. We never fall off the wagon. We never go back to zero. We always have the amount of proof that we have kept track of, of our strength and endurance. And if you are moving forwards and finding those things that work for you to help you make progress mentally and physically in life in the face of depression, then you deserve credit for that. Remember, depression is a life-threatening illness, often leads to suicidal ideation, and any day that you stay alive and fight forwards, especially one where you accomplish a goal in the face of such a thing, is a day that you should give yourself credit for. It's been 850 days for me, and another thing that this tool has let me keep track of is the number of days, not only without debilitation, but from a personal standpoint, it's been 850 days without suicidal ideation, which is something that I suffer from uh, when I was going through that uh, clinical depression and my mental health was continuing to decline. So that just goes to show you how powerful that number can be. Also, if you share that progress with others, you can inspire them to make progress in their lives and find the tools that work for them so that they can move forwards as well. And that way, we can be the change that we want to see in the world. So please do keep track of that number, not just for you, but for others as well. Share it if you got it. Let me know where you're at. Uh, always happy to hear about the progress you're making out there. Let's check in on guest Soul Traveler. Good to see you. Lisa the Luminary, good to see you. Slayer Ken, thanks for being here. Braces can be scary. Claire, thank you for being here as well. And we got a couple people sharing their numbers. Slayer Ken's coming in at 458 days of progress. Good stuff, brother. Well done. Staying consistent out there. And Lisa the Luminary at 550 days of consecutive progress. Congratulations. That is quite an accomplishment. And I'm looking forward to continuing to grow together 
every single day as we move forwards together towards better mental health for everybody involved in the social support system we're building. Uh, checking in on comments, Claire, five years old, tuning in, says, Hi, me, Mom, and Dr. Sam, and Dr. H is high eyeing today. That number is super duper big. Zach, man, thank you. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, uh, it's a whole lot of progress, and I wouldn't know how far I've come if I didn't keep track of it. I wouldn't know it's been 850 days. That's one of those things, too, that depression tries to sell us that victim mindset. It tries to make us believe we are not capable of making progress, and it tries to make us forget how much progress we've made. This tool can combat those things and show you that you are stronger than those temporary thoughts and feelings. So let this be an anchor back to reality on those days when you are going through those difficult times. Use that progress tracking tool. That being said, uh, that's enough of those first two tools. We covered them. Now we're going to get into today's lesson. We're going to stick with that shadow boxing format. Seems to be working well for everybody, uh, myself included. I get to enjoy it. We all get to improve and grow. Today for the technical side, we'll start with a little improvement on our roundhouse kick. We're going to improve our roundhouse kicks by using that rear hand, touching the shoulder. As you know before, we often reach across with that lead hand and let that run us into the, the roundhouse kick. And that's a good strategy for kind of obstructing view, taking an offense, uh, an offensive kind of approach to the roundhouse. But you can improve the power in your roundhouse by reaching across the shoulder here and all the way across and then ripping that hand through on a horizontal plane. So what we're, it's going to look like is this. The rest of the roundhouse mechanics are the same. We're going to make sure that we step out right from that center line. We're going to step off that center line with the ball of the foot. We're going to reach onto our shoulder this time and we're going to chop across whoosh, as we drive through rotating it on the ball of that foot. Now you can do a full 360 if you've got the room or you can do a 180. Right, we step in, step off that line, ball of the foot, touching the ground. That's our anchor point. Remember, keep the heel raised. I'm going to touch the shoulder this time, chop across, and we can do it to 180 degrees here, landing with our back facing uh, the direction we are attacking. And then we're going to bring up that guard to check a kick and complete that rotation. Boom, staying in balance and improving our guard on the same side. So those are the two techniques that we're going to use, we're going to work on today. And we'll practice them alone first, and then we'll just work them in to our shadow boxing routine. Standard rounds, three rounds, three minutes each, one minute breaks in between to catch your breath, drink some water, check in on you, make sure you're staying hydrated, make sure you are not pushing too hard. Remember our goal is better mental health. It is not a physical fitness program, though you do have physical benefits. It's not a uh, competition-based program, but you might learn to be more effective in competition. Our goal is mental health, so we want to aim for that flow zone when we're training. We're not trying to push too hard into more anxiety. We're not trying to take it too easy and fall into boredom. We want to find that flow zone right in between, where we can continue to challenge ourselves every day and continue to grow every day and get stronger in a sustainable way. Shout out to H. Badger as well. Thank you so much for being here. Once again, make sure you got water, breathing in the nose, out the mouth with those strikes. We're going to practice that in roundhouse improvement. And then we'll work it in to our three rounds of shadow boxing. Let's go. We'll have some fighting spirit coming through. Fighting spirit of the 80s from our sweet boombox. Starting now. Hopefully that's coming loud and clear for you guys. And go ahead and square up into your Muay Thai position. And we're going to get this thing going. Visualize that opponent. Remember to keep it mental health focused. Assign that opponent the name of the thing you want to work on. If it's anxiety, make it the anxiety dummy. If it's depression, make it the depression dummy. And land those strikes where you would land them in real life. Improve that technique and visualize knocking those lies out of depression's stupid face. Square up with that opponent. Square hips, square shoulders. Guard high by the brow line. We're going to step off that center line, opening up the hips, pivoting on the ball of the lead foot. We're going to reach that rear hand to our shoulder and we're going to chop horizontally this time. Whoosh, chop horizontally, follow through all the way around 360 degrees or 180 and come back with that check. Once again, square up, visualize that opponent. We're going for a roundhouse kick and we're looking for that improvement from going from the shoulder and chopping across horizontally. Step off the line, ball of the foot plants on the outside of your base. We're going to pivot on the ball of that foot, touch the shoulder, and chop as you toss through 
for that roundhouse kick. All the way around is one way, or you can do that 180 and bring the check back. Let's practice all the way around a few times. Step off the line, opening up the hip, touch the shoulder, chop, and let that foot whip you all the way back around to your stance. Remember, breathe through it. Inhale through the nose, exhale out the mouth, and rip that roundhouse back to stance. Keep it going, keep it moving. Let's start working in some shadow boxing in there. Get creative, use those strikes that you enjoy. Think about which moves link to each other, which moves feed each other, right? The jab feeds the cross, the cross can feed the hook, the hook can set us up to deliver power from the opposite side. That can be a knee, it can be a teeth, it can be anything you'd like. Just think about how to creatively link those things together and have fun. Remember to have fun as you're working through your stances. Back to that roundhouse kick. Work that roundhouse kick in there together using that new power adder, right? Touch the shoulder, chop across horizontally, step off that line, and whoosh, drive that kick right through that center line. Keep it centered, tuck the chin for balance, visualize that opponent, exhale through your strikes. Let's go, roundhouse, all the way around, back to stance. One more time, roundhouse, touch the shoulder, and chop through. Make sure you're rolling those hips. When you chop the arm, the hips should be rolling over. We want to land on the shin. We want that, that whole leg to rotate. We want to chop right through our opponent. Using that arm in that scissor motion, we don't want it to scissor through out here on the side. We want it to chop right through our opponent. So if your opponent's in front of you, you want the leg and arm to cross at this same point, right? Dead center. Let's do it again. Improve that roundhouse kick. Let's keep it going. And all the way around, guard high, hips forward, chin tucked. Nice and square stance. Remember, square hips and shoulders after each strike. Continue that roundhouse. Whoosh. And back to stance. Bring that guard high right away. Keep the guard tight and keep moving in your balanced Muay Thai stance. It's the end of round one. Catch your breath, drink some water. We got a one minute break and then we're gonna get in to rounds two and three. Shout out to Haynes all the way from Germany. Appreciate you. ITSDXO, thank you for being here. Abdumella and Sunshine and Rainbows. Good to see you. Thank you everybody for supporting the cause. Thank you so much for being here. I might be in the way. If there's a class moving in and I'm in the way, I might have to <laughs> turn this camera a little bit, but so far so good. All right, 36 seconds. Make sure you're drinking water, staying hydrated and you're checking out on you for those signs of overreaching. Dizziness, nauseousness, lightheadedness, all of those are signs of overreaching. We wanna dial that intensity back. In the next two rounds, we're gonna get a little more creative. We're gonna to continue to flow. We're gonna to continue to move around and work those different shadow boxing techniques in there that we enjoy as individuals. Remember, it's about empowering you with tools, not enabling you to rely on a specific day or training program. You want to use those ones that you enjoy so you can give yourself a creative, fun routine that will continue to build yourself up over time. Here we go. Step in, this time with the one, two, right down the center line. Chin tuck, maintain proper form, and flow with it. Work those techniques that you enjoy most. Step in, keep it creative, keep it centered, keep it balanced, and let's work the roundhouse in there right into our shadow boxing routine. And step off that center line, open up the hip, rotate on the ball of the foot, chop that arm through for the power adder, and back to stance. Keep it going. Let's think about what moves add, what moves would feed the roundhouse kick. A hook is gonna set us up, right? It's gonna put that rear leg back, it's gonna be preloaded, ready to roll. So from that hook position, you can touch the shoulder from here, keeping that guard tight, and then whoosh, Make sure you step off the line though. You can cover up that opening in the hips and that step off the line with the hook. So instead of just rotating in, maybe you can rotate and open up that hip and step into that beginning of the roundhouse kick right there, helping it flow together. Touch the shoulder for our new power adder and whoosh, rip through, chopping through that opponent. Let's keep it moving, stay creative with it. Think about those different moves that link together and remember, visualize that opponent. Challenge yourself to your intensity level. Us, 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 and put in that work. Remember, you're working for you. So give it your best, because that's what you deserve. Let's go work that power out there in there. Onto the roundhouse kick, back to stance. Let's start working on that halfway turn, that 180 turn in the roundhouse. Grab, cross, hook. We're gonna do the 180 turn. We're still using the power out of here. Whoosh, we're stepping across with our backs turned. We're gonna bring that rear leg up. 
necklace and bring it around for a check. Link the roundhouse with the check, and now you've got an extra tool to work into your arsenal. Step in, bomb, bomb, bomb. Rotate through. We're gonna go roundhouse 180, 180, and then bring that rear leg up and turn through for the check. Back to stance. Let's keep it going. Boom, boom, boom. Up and whoosh, whoosh. All the way around. Rotate on the ball of that foot all the way back around and work those moves. Link those moves together. Focus on balance and form. Don't worry too much about intensity. You can work that when you get to the bag. But when you're shadow boxing, just focus on form and balance. The more balance and the smoother you move, the faster you'll be able to move. And the faster you move, the more power you'll be able to generate in your strikes. Back to stance, keep the chin tucked off the center line. Let's work on that power adder in the roundhouse. Remember, touch the shoulder and whip through, all the way through, scissoring that leg and arm across. Let's do it with the 180 turn this time, right? Step off the line, open the hip, touch the shoulder, chop through, boom. Back and turn, and then whoosh, bring that rear leg up to check. That's the end of round two, 58 seconds. We're gonna start our final round. Shout out to Tanner Hamilton from A Safe Place Inside Your Head. Appreciate you, brother. If you don't know who he is, check him out. He's got an awesome nonprofit mental health organization out there at A Safe Place Inside Your Head. Thank you so much for meeting people where they're at, Tanner, and being a support and a beam of light in our community. We got 37 seconds, we're gonna hit this final session, and then we're gonna wrap it up so we're not in anybody's way out here. We've got other classes to start. So, 28 seconds. Remember, visualize that opponent, visualize making contact with that opponent, and chopping through the body, right? Slice that body in half, visualize that target, and keep balance at all times. Tuck the chin. Start high by the brow line, let's go. In 10, 9, 8, we can start a little early, let's go. Start moving with it, boom, boom, boom. Work those different moves that feed each other, keep the guard tight, and work your mo motion in there too. Forwards motion, backwards motion, left and right. Remember, stay balanced, move as a fighter moves. When we're moving forwards, lead leg leads. When we're moving back, rear leg leads, left, right. Always keeping that space, don't bring them together and lose your balance. Back to stance, get in your creative flow and work that roundhouse in there however you'd like. You can use the 180 with the check or you can use the full 360, whatever feels better for you. And again, dial in that intensity to where you're at today. Meet yourself where you're at. Step off that line, open up the hip, pivot on the ball of the foot, whoosh, all the way through. Back to stance, keeping the guard tight and keep moving. Let's go, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Exhale through those strikes, roundhouse kick, and back to stance. Let's work it with the 180. Back to stance, roundhouse 180. Bring the check leg up and rotate back into your balance stance. Keep it moving, let's go. Work on those things that you need help with, the things that you could improve. You might need a little bit of work with. And we've got a minute and 50 seconds left, keep going. Keep dialing in that intensity and keep moving to give yourself a challenge out here. Whoosh. Work those different moves. You can work the clinch in there. Drive those clinch knees. You can work in Superman punches if you'd like. Whatever you enjoy. Teeps, roundhouse kicks. Whoosh. And mix up those techniques. Have fun with it. Visualize that opponent. Keep moving. Stay nimble. Work that head movement in there as well. Slips, right? Cover up. Think about how to counter. Whoosh. Whoosh. What feeds? What moves feed the next moves? Checks, checks, work the teeth. Rear T, boom, roundhouse kick with the power adder. All the way around, back to stance. Remember to turn the hip on the roundhouse and pivot on the ball that lead foot. More roundhouse kicks in there. Work that power adder, the whip and the arm, chin tucked. Keep it going, whoosh. And back to stance. Rotate through, turning that hip over. Find those moves that flow together and visualize that opponent. Make contact with it. And back to stance. Keep going. Keep that guard high. Chin tuck for balance and fight for you. Fight for that quality of life you deserve. How do you know you deserve it? It's based on what you give. Deserve what you give, so give it 100%. Let's go. Push, push, push. Work. 20 seconds left. Pick up the pace. And back to stance. 
keep moving with it. Work those advancing techniques. Pick up that intensity. Switch knees. Low knee. Roundhouse kick. And that is the end of round three of progress and success today. If you showed up for just one minute, remember give yourself credit for that minute. Every single step counts. Every single minute counts as progress. Putting you a minute ahead of where you were before. And until next time, I'll catch you guys same sack time, same sack channel. Same sack life. Sack man out.